Hi, my name's Andy. Um, this is a, a video about Scheme, which is a type of Lisp, uh, which is really cool, and you should really dig the cool. So um, I'm going to go very quickly through a lot of things. Uh, watch the later videos if you want more detail. Uh, this is just to give you a feeling of how utterly cool Scheme, which is a type of Lisp, is. So, it's very straightforward. Scheme is simple, it's weird, and it's cool. Let's start with simple. Um, it was designed uh, as a language for teaching, uh, for describing in an abstract way how processes work. Uh, the syntax of Scheme, the, the way you put together characters to make uh, commands, is uh, almost as simple as you can imagine. There's basically one thing you can do, there's basically one data structure, and both of those two things are the same thing. So let's start with uh, the one thing you can do. Uh, basically, you can have a bracket, and then a word, and then space, and a bunch of other words, and a closed bracket. The first word is considered to be the operator, which is like the command or the function name. And the other things are called operands, which are just uh, like arguments to the function. So let's take an example of this. Uh, you can add up two numbers. You, know, you open bracket, and then you have a plus, which is the name of the function. And then a three and a four, so can you guess what the answer is when I type this? into my scheme interpreter, the answer is 7. Uh, here's another function uh, called star. Can you guess what the answer to this is? It's 12. Uh, we can also nest these things. So here we've got a function called plus. Um, uh, we're giving it number 5 as its first argument. Uh, and the second argument is uh, another the, re the, the return value of another function, which is the, the times function. So we're multiplying 2 by 2. Um, and putting that answer into that place in the plus function. So we've got 5 plus 4, which makes 9. Making sense so far. Uh, other things we can do. We can uh, define symbols, which is a bit like uh, declaring variables in some languages. So you can define a, a variable here, or a symbol here called foo, give it a value 3. When you type that in, nothing happens. But then when you ask what foo is, which is what we're doing here, you get back the answer 3. Uh, and then we can use that symbol in place of its value uh, as an argument to a function. So here we're multiplying the value of foo by 4, which of course is 3 times 4, 12. Uh, other things we can do. We can define functions. This is the way you define a function. So it's notice everything is open bracket, something, 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 close bracket. So here, open bracket, define, uh, and then the thing after the define is another bracketed expression here rather than... Uh, rather than just a symbol on its own, so that means this is a function. Uh, the function is called square and it takes one argument called x and the body of that function is immediately after that and it's just uh, return the value of multiplying x by x. So if we ask what the square of 4 is, we get what we would expect, 16. We can also use these in compound expressions so we can add up these two squares and get back the correct answer. Um, other things you can do, you can do flow control, as in um, do one thing if one condition is a certain way, or another thing if another thing is a certain way. So in this case, let's make a function called abs. Notice I've got line breaks in here, that doesn't make any difference, um, just to help us understand it. So we're defining a function called abs, uh, it takes an argument called x, uh, and the body of that function is a single if um, expression. So we say open bracket if, and then uh, what we are evaluating, so if x is less than 0, that's what that means, um, then we return the result of calling the minus function on x. Otherwise, we return x. So you, the first thing you give to the if is the, the condition, and then the next thing is the uh, then case, and the next thing is the else case. And as you can see at the bottom there, if you ask for the abs of minus 3, you get 3. And if you ask for the abs of 3, you also get 3. So it works. OK, so uh, those were functions. Now let's look at data. So there's only one type of data structure in Scheme. Um, well, depending on how you define it. Um, and it's, it's a list of things. And notice that that is written exactly the same way as a procedure or a function that we've looked at before. Um, so when the uh, interpreter responds to you with a list, it's going to look like the thing at the top. If we want to make one and give it to the interpreter, then we have to use the list function. So that's what uh, what you can see down the bottom there. You just say list and then the things you want to be in that list. 
So let's have an example of doing this. We make a list of the numbers 4, 6 and 5 and then we ask the we pass that as an argument to the sort function and you get back that list but sorted. We ask for the length of this list which obviously has two things in it and the answer is 2. So that was its uh, how how scheme is simple. Now let's look at how scheme is weird. Well, it's kind of functional. It certainly encourages a functional style of programming. Um, it has dynamic types, but these days we don't consider that weird anymore. Um, functions can be treated just the same as any other um, piece of data. Um, so code uh, is data, can be treated as data, and also you can treat data as code. So let's get into that and find out what I mean by that. So let's start by um, uh, talking a bit about how you write functional code. So imagine we've got a list here, um, which is the numbers 1 to 5, and so we've made a list on the right hand side there and then we the rest of this statement is um, setting the symbol my dash list um, to be that value. Notice that you can have dashes in the names of things and, and that's fine. So uh, what is my list? Well it's the list of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Now we have a function called car which uh, extracts things from a list. What it does is it extracts the first thing from a list uh, so in this case the answer is 1. We have another function called kudur, Um and what that does is gives you the rest of the list. So obviously in this case that's 2, 3, 4, 5. Now the reason uh, I'm talking about this, uh, obviously we're not doing functional programming here but this is um, these are things that we, the basic building blocks we need to write functional um, procedures. Okay so now let's get into um, a functional procedure. This is called sum uh, so we're defining, the top line says we're defining a function, its name is sum, it takes in a list of values. Uh, and it's a big if statement. Um, the first part of the if there is if the list of values has length 1. Uh, by the way, this is quite an inefficient way to do it, but never mind. Um, if the list of values has length 1, we return the first thing. Uh, otherwise, we return the result of adding up the rest. Um, or rather, adding up the first thing with the sum of the rest of the things. And notice that the sum procedure here is calling uh, uh, the sum procedure inside itself. That last line calls the same function but with different arguments, specifically with a list that is one shorter, so we know this will eventually end. Uh, and if you ask what the sum of 5, 6 and 7 is, you get the correct answer as you can see at the bottom there. Don't worry about the details of that. We will get into, in later videos, we'll get into the absolute details of how to understand these functions. The main point is you have to break lists up and you have to call functions from within themselves, recursive function calls. Um, okay, other things that are weird. Uh, types are completely dynamic. And I don't have to tell you this because you know about this because you've done JavaScript, right? But anyway... Um, so imagine that we define a function called improved code, which takes in a value q and multiplies it by 2 and returns the answer. So if we ask, um, if we define code quality to be 4, and then we pass our code quality to the improved code function, we get back the answer 8. Okay, that's fine. Now imagine that we define code quality to be poor. Well, we can still pass it to that function. No one's going to object to us until we try and run it. And when we try and run it, um, it fails. So you're used to that. Dynamic typing is not weird anymore, right? Okay, other things. Uh, functions can be treated exactly like data. This is what I said earlier. So imagine we have a function called double, takes in uh, an argument called value, and it returns two times the value. And now let's make another function called apply twice. It takes in two arguments. One is called fun, and one is called value, and it, it assumes that fun, when you pass it, is going to be a function itself. And what it does is it calls that function on value, and then it calls that function on value again. Okay, it applies it twice. So if we pass in double and an argument of 2, we're going to apply the double function twice and return the value. So the result is um, of applying it once is 4, and then applying it again is 8. That's weird, huh? Uh, okay, other things. So um, uh, how, how do we know what's data and what's code? Well, actually, they can swap around. So imagine we've got a function called swap23. Uh, don't worry about the details of it, but look at that example in the middle of the page there. If I pass in 1, 2, 3 to that function, it returns 1, 3, 2. It swaps the second and third things in a list. Uh, so if I pass ABC to it, it returns ACB. Make sense? So now, imagine now I've got a function 
uh, I've got a, I'm defining a symbol called 4 over 2 which is a list so this is not going to divide anything that slash symbol there means divide it's not going to divide anything it's just a list of symbols the slash symbol the 4 symbol and the 2 symbol don't worry about the quote we will get to that although it will take us quite a while um, so what is 4 over 2 uh, it is slash 4 2 okay makes sense now we have this function called eval, which means um, treat this as code. So if you treat that as code, we're going to divide 4 by 2, and we get the answer 2. Now let's make a new thing, a new symbol called switched, which is the result of running the swap 2, 3 procedure and passing the argument 4 over 2. Are you seeing where I'm going? So if I evaluate switched, what is the answer going to be? Well, let me give you some hints. 4 over 2 is going to have swap 2, 3 applied to it, so it's going to become slash 2, 4. Then if we run that code, what do we get? Well, we get a half. Uh, divide 2 by 4, you get half. And just to demonstrate uh, what's going on there, if we look at switched, switched is slash 2, 4, just as I said. Make sense? Weird, huh? OK, so we've talked about how it's weird. But also, it is deeply cool. And uh, over time, hopefully, uh, in these videos, you'll, you'll come fully to appreciate its coolness. But let's start with... Uh, um, some hints, some little uh, tidbits that you, uh, you that you might consider cool. So we can do air generic programming, programming that um, doesn't care about type. That you can write your code once, no matter what type the arguments are, without any of that syntax you have in C plus plus or Java. You know, it's just part. You just do it. You just write the code. Um, generating code within the language without using some other language to generate it uh, is incredibly easy. Um, this clever thing called metaprogramming, which is writing code that builds code or code that is about code, um, well, in Scheme, that's just programming. Uh, it's, it's no different. Um, there's these things called macros, which are, are, are kind of metaprogramming. Um, uh, think of a C macro, but um, part of the language and, and uh, easy to use and uh, difficult to make mistakes. Uh, well, in Scheme, macros are are almost just the same as writing more code. And one of the things that you are going to learn to love is that there are a lot of brackets in Scheme. So let's have a quick look. Um, if we pass a list 54321 to the sort function and we pass in the less than operator as the way that you want to sort it, the operator you want to use to compare items, we get back 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Now if we pass the list ABCA and AB, and we pass in the string less than function, which is what that, that weird thing on the end there is. Um, we get back A, A, B, A, B, C, which is the lexical sort of these things. Um, what's important to note here is that the sort function that's running there is the same code. So generics are easy. Uh, OK, generating code is easy. Um, imagine that you um, define a function called D0, which takes in an argument called name. And what it returns is a list of the symbol define and uh, the result of calling string to symbol on the name argument a string to symbol is a, fu a built-in function which produces a symbol out of a string uh, and we're passing zero what that means is if you call d0 with an argument of a you get back a list of the word define a and zero which looks like code but at the moment it isn't code it's just data so now we can define another function uh, called d0 list and it takes in an argument called names um, and what it does is it runs the map procedure which calls a function on, um, on every thing in a list um, and the function that we wanted to call is the d0 function and the argument the list that it's going to run over is this thing called names which we passed in so if we now define a symbol called my code um, and define it to be the result of calling d0 list with a list of a b and c then you can see at the bottom there that my code becomes a list of lists and each of those lists says define a zero. This is all still data, this is not code. So, put me back where I live. Okay, so what is my code? It's that list um, that we just saw at the bottom of the page. So, um, let's evaluate everything in my code using the for each function, which just does um, does what you tell it to do. So that did nothing. Now we're going to ask, what is A? 
Well, we've evaluated everything in the list above. We've run it as if it was code. So now A is defined to be 0, and B is defined to be 0, and C is defined to be 0. You didn't write define A 0, B 0, C 0. You just passed in a list of A, B, and C um, to a function. And just to check that I'm not cheating you, um, let's check what D is. Well, D is uh, uh, not defined. We've only defined A, B, and C because that's what we passed in. Okay, other metaprogramming we can do. Imagine we've got a function called double, a function called square. Imagine we've got a function called apply twice. Um, then we can define another function called quadruple, which applies double twice. And we've got another function called to the power of four, which uses apply twice on square. And those functions work in the way they want. Where, uh, and we're using code to build new code in, in a way that is much more meta than you can do um, in a language like C. So, what I haven't even talked about yet, because um, they're too difficult, um, but are just the coolest things are, you can write your own language using macros. You can make things look entirely unlike Scheme, uh, apart from the brackets. And you will acknowledge the power of the brackets. So, on your screen is how to install, on Ubuntu, the MZ Scheme Scheme Interpreter. Do it. Thank you very much.